Welcome to Monet Cafe and my patrons on my Patreon page. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and this is a lesson on value, taking your art to the next level. That might sound like a bold claim, but it truly is the fact that color often gets the glory, but value does the work and is so important for good art. Now, I stress value all the time in my videos, and I have some videos on the importance of value, but this is a very in-depth video at the request of my patrons. And there's going to be a little teaser because part two to this is me literally painting in the dark. It's fascinating. So stay tuned for another video on that. But I want to thank my patrons for this video. They did a poll and requested, um, they had a choice of like four different topics, and they chose the importance of value. So this lesson is the most in-depth lesson on value I've ever done. So thank my patrons. They will get the full extended version of this video, but don't worry, Monet Cafe fans and subscribers, you're gonna get some great content right here as well. Welcome artistic friends to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and today's lesson is going to be on value. Now I know I've done a lot of videos on the importance of value in painting. And I guess the reason I've done it a lot is because it is that important. But this particular time is because uh, my patrons on my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins, suggested, requested this particular video to focus very heavily on value. I gave them a poll to choose what my next lesson would be and I would say uh, the majority of the people voted for a lesson on value. And I really wanna break it down because I, I talk about it a lot while I paint, but I'd like to give you a little bit more of the science behind value and kind of some of the optical illusions of value and how you can make that work while you're painting or uh, to create stronger, more beautiful artwork. And also, join me too. Uh, this will be limited on the Monet Cafe uh, channel, YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have limited content. The full content will be for my patrons because they requested this. And it's just a little something special I can do for my patrons. But Monet Cafe YouTube channel will get some great content as well. What I'm going to be doing, I have wanted, actually, I've wanted to do this for a while. And I've actually done it. It wasn't that long ago where I literally created a painting in the dark. Okay, not totally pitch black, <laughs> but I had incredibly dim lighting. It was nighttime and I came in and I had some uh, pastels laid out already and I wanted to paint and I knew, I had done it before, but not as dark as I did it this one time. And I knew that that's one of the best ways to see value instead of color, it kind of cancels out the color. I'll be talking more about why that's important and I'll also be creating the painting in the dark. I'm gonna take my, I'll probably do it at night in here, but if it's not dark enough, I have another room I'm literally gonna take my easel into and record myself painting in the dark. And the neat thing is you get really uh, exciting results because you're not focused on color, you're focused on value, which is the most important thing. They always say value is king, but color gets the glory. So let's have fun with this lesson and we're gonna learn a whole lot about value and hopefully you will learn a lot and it'll make your artwork even better. All right, let's do it. All right, I've zoomed in here so you can see things better. And oh, by the way, I'm wearing my Monet Cafe Designers Artist Series. It's called Bracelet with the little Monet Cafe charm. This one is the Monet Cafe style. There are three styles and I just love it. So if you want one, I'll provide a link at the end of this video or within the description section of the video. They're so fun, they kind of go with everything. All right, so in talking about value, this is a nice little tool. It's really inexpensive. I think you can get it on most of the uh, art stores or online uh, options. And it's called a Grayscale and Value Finder. And it's a great tool, especially when you're first getting started uh, in helping you to see value. Because sometimes some of those middle values can get kind of hard to see. It's got these neat little keys, they're called in here. There's multiple reasons for this and them being called keys that I'll talk about in a minute. That sometimes when you have a color Color sometimes is distracting. You're like, oh, what value is this? Well, we, we know it's not totally white on this side of the value, and we know it's not totally dark, but where, where, or where does it fit into these values? So I'm gonna give you some tricks of finding that. But these little keys 
are a good way to just kind of hold it up and also to hold it up to um, your reference image or photo. Uh, it's nice that you can just isolate it like that. Um, so that is a very helpful tool. Now let me explain this scale and how it is organized. I was under the misconception, I think as any novice artist would be, that there are 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 um, values or um, gradations of value. And wouldn't you normally think that one would be white and 10 would be the darkest? No, 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 that's not the way it is with the value scale. 10 is called value one because it's a hundred percent black okay and now is there really ever a hundred percent black okay value is relative we're going to be talking about that too um so on this in relation to this scale it's the darkest one value two three four five and all the way up to value ten that is why I will talk about, it's not the focus of this video, but I will talk a little bit about high key paintings. Again, the little keys, okay? These are called um, keys. And so the higher keys are these higher numbers. High key paintings are usually your lighter values, okay? If you've ever heard that term, that's why. Um, all right, so this is our handy dandy little tool. Very helpful, but as I was saying, value is relative. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take an example and find out. This is going to be a neat way for you to see what I mean. I say this expression all the time when I'm painting. Value is relative and color is also relative. That will be another video. But these are fun kind of things. I love the science of color and some of these optical illusions. And I know you guys do too because my patrons, I've shared some little color tests and you guys always respond so well to those color tests. They're fun, right? And uh, and it is really kind of like an illusion of the eyes. So let's let's show how that works. All right, I've got three pieces of paper here. This one happens to be just uh, copy paper, okay? So it doesn't really matter. These two are drawing paper. Um, so we've got a, a light, okay? We would call that a high key. Uh, it'd be the whitest white in the scale. Then we've got a middle value that's probably more like this value six right here. And then we've got a high key, I mean, I'm sorry, a low key value, value one black, okay, closest to black. So let's take a look at um, what I mean by value is relative. Let's take, okay, I'm gonna show you some pastels now and I'll, I'll show you a picture too because I can't hold them up so good here like this. And, uh, I am also going to be showing you a picture of these same pastels converted to a black and white image. Okay, we'll use that later. We'll talk about that later. But it is a really great little tip. I wanted to recommend it now in seeing value. If you're new with uh, painting and you're having a hard time, like I said, some of these middle values get kind of hard to tell where they fall in the value scale, converting your pastels, take a picture of your pastels, convert it to black and white, and you can, uh, you're, you're not as distracted by the color and you can more easily see what value they are. By the way, I, you know, I, I've been assuming uh, what value is. It is basically the lightness or darkness of a hue, a color. And uh, so I think that was pretty obvious, but all right, so let's take one of these. I've put the blackest black that I could find in my pastel palette on the top here. I've put the whitest white I could find. I think that's like probably a true white according to the pastels that I have. Um, have you ever noticed that when buying paint colors like for walls or ceilings, you say, I want white. Well. There's a million different whites, okay? So again, it's all relative and, and it, there really isn't a true black or a true white. It's just based on what it's um, surrounding. So we're also going to be looking at these values that I've selected in the middle. I purposely chose ones that are a little more neutral, okay? A little more um, calmed down in color, so to speak. I didn't want color to be so uh, distracting. Probably the boldest in color of all of these is probably going to be that one right there. This green's pretty uh, pretty saturated with color. Not too bad though, okay? So I thought that'd be better than being distracted by color. So what I'm gonna do here, other than the black and white, uh, see if you can find in this middle 
um, that middle range of pastels here in the middle of my little tray. See if you can find, I'll show the picture again. I'm going to show it in color. If you can find the darkest value, I think you'll probably pretty easily and pretty quickly identify the darkest value is this here. Now, I'm not sure about your computer monitor um, because sometimes that changes things, but it may look black, but it's actually a green. Okay, can you see that? I've got a pretty decent light to show here. Um, so it's actually a pretty dark green. All right, so let's see. Is, let's see how dark this is. How dark is this value? Well, let's go ahead and let's just put a little sample of it right up here on the white. Wow, it's dark, right? Look how dark that is. Man, it almost looks black on that paper, doesn't it? You guys are probably already figuring out where I'm headed. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at it on the middle value, all right? Isn't that funny how all of a sudden, if we could just zoom in, and I think I will. All right, now look at that. All of a sudden, it doesn't look quite as black. Well, let me, if you can't tell that now, let me go over here. Look, can you see the difference? That one is so high contrast. And contrast, just so you know, is just where light and dark meet, okay? You see the same color on the white looks much darker than on the gray, all right? Now, let me zoom back out a little bit. And now let's do it on the darkest color that I have up here. All right, same pastel. And let's just do that over here. Now, this is what I was discovering, especially when working. This is black drawing paper, and I've been doing some paintings on black drawing paper. And it's really, I'll stay in front so my voice doesn't change in the video. It's really quite a great exercise in value, in understanding how value is relative. All of a sudden, this is not, doesn't appear black or even dark anymore, correct? Let me zoom into this one. All right, I actually pulled this off so that you could see it better. Um, and my lighting makes it a little difficult. So, but can you see now that all of a sudden it doesn't look that, there's a better angle of it right there with the light shining on it. Can you see how all of a sudden that doesn't look dark anymore? Again, compare it to the swatches that are up here. So value is relative or dependent on what is surrounding it or what it surrounds. Now let's play around a little bit more with these examples. In the same little set of pastels, let's see, other than the lightest light that I have and the darkest dark surrounding them, let's see if you can find which one in these middle pastels is the lightest value without me um, desaturating it or taking the color away. Um, I would say you probably would choose between these two right here, um, the uh, lavender kind of, and this minty green. But actually, if you convert it to black and white, you can see that this one is, other than the white, is the lightest value of the choices. All right, let's take a look at this pastel, which is a Terry Ludwig pastel. Uh, it's actually one that dropped one time. It didn't get too bad damage, but <laughs> it's a little bit of damage there. All right, we're obviously getting the hang of this and know that, whoa, that is a light value, right? So we've got a really light value. This could actually serve as your lightest light on this, if you, on this black surface if you were doing uh, a painting on a dark surface because it reads as light so easily. And on this middle value drawing paper, let's take a look at it. We can kind of see when I put it up here, it's similar to the same value of the paper. It's perhaps a little bit lighter than the paper. Now look how, I'm gonna look through my viewfinder to see the difference of it shows. Look at the difference of how it shows up on the black versus the middle value paper here. All right, now, again, you probably already know when we put it on the lighter paper, it's going to appear dark all of a sudden. Can you see the difference? It's dark on the white surface, but light on the dark surface. I hope that uh, this little example that I'm doing is showing what I mean about value being relative. A color and a value uh, is not really determined until you put it on something or surround it with something. All right, let's do, let's just do another one here. I'm gonna take, um, 
kind of this dull green here. This is almost the color of this paper. So let's just start with that right there, okay? This is a nice, I really like this color, okay? It's a little bit um, darker in value than the paper. And now let's take it and put it on the white, okay? It appears like a pretty medium darker value on the white. And then let's take it and put it on the dark. Again, a very, very light value. So let's get, let's go even. We did our darkest dark of the middle values and we did our lightest light. Well, let's go ahead and do the black and the white, the highest in the range of pastels that I had. All right, we're gonna take the black. I'm gonna put the black. Let's go, since we did the darkest over here, I wanna put the black here. Obviously, that's a little darker than the screen. Well, it might not be obvious um, from the screen you're looking at, but it is a little darker than that green I put down. We're gonna put the black here. Again, pretty dark, but it doesn't, especially with my actual vision looking at it, you know, not through my um, camera, uh, it is, it appears much darker here than it does here. Now let's take it and put it over here. Let me make sure that's in the camera. Yes, let's put it next to here. It might not be in the camera actually. And again, you may not be able to see, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Oh yeah, you can. You can see it actually. Um, it is darker um, than the paper. So the drawing paper that I'm using is black, but it's not as black as this pastel, all right? So pretty interesting. Now let's take, the actual white pastel and I'm going to put it on this side here. Let me see how that reads on the camera. Can't even see it really. Yeah, same thing. I can kind of see it's it's uh, showing up a, a bit brighter than the paper, but let's do it here. I think this is a, a Jack Richardson. A lot of pastel sets don't even come with a pure white. Uh, but this particular set did. Okay, do you see that right there? Um, it appears, obviously, the lightest thing on this paper. Let's look at the, the white on this one. Wow, look how that white pops. Again, high contrast here, no contrast here. Again, too, uh, contrast is something that we want to keep in mind when we're painting. That is something as artists that we have the power to choose where someone's eye goes with the contrast in the painting. And we want to keep that minimalized or reserved for the parts of our painting that we find or want to be the most dramatic or impactful. Find out what the reference photo or the image is, what you find moved you about it. Make that the focus and then have everything else more low contrast in the painting. And I thought contrast was important to talk about because we're talking about value and value. high contrast is where light and dark meet. Now in your particular painting, you may not have a range from, this is the, probably the easiest one to see here, from white to black. As a matter of fact, it is a good idea to not use the entire value range when creating a painting. Now, let me add just a few more of these uh, middle values uh, in here, just so you can get an idea. I didn't get these in order, <laughs> unfortunately, but here's an example of uh, kind of this pretty um, sagey kind of um, more of a cooler green. It appears uh, as light on the black surface. It appears as darker to middle value here, and it's going to appear quite dark here. Isn't that interesting? And I hope this is really going to help you uh, when you're painting to get an idea of um, a color isn't really dark just because you pick it up and look at it. You know, you might look at that and go, oh, that's kind of a darker value. Or you might compare it to what other pastels it's laying around. Be sure you don't do that. You're comparing it to 
whatever surface you're working on. And you may even tone your surface. You know, if you've seen my videos, I don't like working on white unless I'm doing a watercolor underpainting. And uh, so it's gonna be dependent on what you've toned your surface. It's also gonna be dependent on what you've already laid down. So you don't just grab a dark value. I think that's probably one of the mistakes as early artists is we see something in our reference image that's dark and all of a sudden we think, oh, grab my darkest dark. Or you see like the, uh, maybe the roots down near the bottom of a tree or not the roots, the base of a tree or deep grasses and you grab almost a black. And then for the sky, you grab your lightest light for the sky. Now, let me share a little bit about why that's not the best way to paint. Well, first of all, let me just describe what is contrast. Contrast is basically the difference between the blacks and the whites. And high contrast means your blacks are really, really dark and your whites are really, really white or your lights are really, really light. High contrast would be the two opposite ends of the value scale. This is high contrast. You notice that, and the way the value scale is laid out, it makes it a little easier to see that. Let's come down to value five and six. Do you see how the contrast is not that stark or not that dramatic? And that would be a low contrast type of painting if you painted more with those uh, middle values instead of high contrast. High contrast paintings, if you paint all high contrast everywhere, your painting can get too busy and uh, too much going on everywhere. But at the same time, again, contrast is relative to what you choose, what value scale you choose in your painting. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But I would recommend not choosing uh, the extremes for your painting, unless you're just really trying to create something very high contrast for dramatic um, uh, influence. However, mostly in our landscape paintings, and I'd say the people that are typically on Monet Cafe, and we like a little bit more of that subtlety and beauty that we see in nature inherently. Uh, you don't usually see a lot of high contrast unless the lighting is just right on a particular day. All right, so let me share with you what I meant about some examples of the different keys that you can paint in. This, and I'm going to pull up the image on the computer, would be the first one, number one, the full value range. You're using a value scale, like I just said, is not a good idea, of the entire gamut of your pastels. You're using your whitest white and your darkest dark and any kind of value in between. Basically, you're going to have too much going on um, and it's just, a, a, just too big of a range for you to have a more of a true impact or subtlety to your work. It's just gonna be a little bit too crazy. Now, low key range would be what I was saying before. Low key, let me hold up the value scale again. If high key is here, okay, a high key painting, and I'm gonna show you some examples of that, low key painting would be here, okay? There are the lower numbers, value one, two, three. Again, it seems a little backwards, kind of like if you know anything about photography, the aperture setting always seems backwards. The larger number is the smaller hole of the aperture and vice versa. So a low key painting is going to be these lower keys, darker, okay? A high key painting is going to be these. So a low key range is more of this example number two. A high key range is example number three. Now let me show you some paintings that I think are fabulous in the high key range and wouldn't you know it none other than our Monet that our group is named after he has some of the most beautiful high key paintings now with a high key painting one thing that I think is beautiful about that um, and again I don't want to make this uh, video this is on value but it, it, it's all <laughs> about value here it's not about high and low key paintings I'm going to do another video that focuses more on how to do those but it's worth mentioning here that when you paint in high key, the focus obviously doesn't become contrast as much because we don't have as much contrast going on. Uh, the, the values are closer together. We don't have a large scale of contrast. So what we do as artists, it color becomes more important and color becomes uh, the star and the play between colors and the harmony between colors 
as Monet has so beautifully represented in many of his high key paintings. I'm very drawn to high key art. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now this is the middle uh, value range. Uh, example, well, it says number three here. It's actually number four. The middle value range. So we're not going to the whitest white. We're not going to the darkest dark. And I would say most of your artwork is going to be better. You, you might add uh, one more on each end or one more, you know, choosing on which side instead of one, two, three, four, five of these middle. You may have six and choose, you know, which side you want to add to. But I say a painting is more... Um, natural feeling. That's the word I've been trying to find. Uh, it feels more uh, representative of nature um, to be more in those middle range values and not have the full value range. Also too, I just think it's easier on the eyes and it keeps our eyes from flitting around all over the place. Now, one thing I will say with regards um, to value and contrast, you want to reserve your areas of contrast for your focal points. Because if you have high contrast, or contrast, you don't have to say high contrast. Again, we don't wanna use the whole value scale um, or the, the, the extremes, the black and the white. Uh, but if you use a middle value scale, for example, this one here, your areas of high contrast would be this juxtaposed to this. So you're going to be using those where you want the, the center uh, central focus of whatever your subject matter is. And the rest of the painting should be more mid-values. Um, the best art that I've seen or the ones that I'm more drawn to are ones that uh, don't have so much going on with contrast and many middle values more uh, and neutral colors and then preserving your high contrast and your more intense colors for your focal points. Okay, now let's do another little example of an actual little landscape to get an idea. This is the end of the content for Monet Cafe YouTube channel. And this is the portion where my patrons are getting the full version. But I am going to go ahead and speed this up. What I did, I created three paintings from the same reference image, picture of my backyard again, and on the three separate colors uh, using the same principles that I spoke about before. So I'm going to speed this up a bit for you guys in Monet Cafe so you can see what I'm working on. And you already had the first part of this lesson. So I'll add some music and you guys enjoy. And again, if you'd like to become a patron and always get the full content of my videos, you can do so at patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel at any time and it's a lot of fun. I also have a special private group for my patrons on Facebook and we have contests. I'm going to be giving away uh, a Monet Cafe Artist Series bracelet this week. And so anyway, lots of fun. Enjoy the rest of this. I hope you learned a lot and please watch to the end for the teaser of the next coming video.
Oh, that was fun and a lot of information, but I hope and pray some great information for you. And like I said in one of my posts, I was hoping you guys would have an aha moment if you were questionable about value and the importance of it in good art. So I'm concluding this video now with a teaser. This is a photo I took in my backyard yesterday. And this morning I got up early to do a painting in the dark. That is one of the greatest way. These are the pastels that I sat beside me to choose from. One of the greatest way to see values to turn the lights out. So I turned the light out in my on my big lamp that I use and in my studio and it was dark. I even turned my iPad off. It was, uh, oh, and now you can see, um, all of a sudden you can see value better. Now my camera compensates for the dark, so you're actually seeing more in this recording than I saw. It was darker than it appears here. Uh, so I was pretty close to painting in the dark, just super low lighting. And I am excited to bring you the video. I did the original part of the painting in just 15 minutes. I wanted to limit myself. It's on a piece of pastel mat. And I, I worked quickly and just grabbed color according to value. I could not see the color. And it has some pretty interesting results that I was very pleased with. So get ready for part two to learning about value, literally painting in the dark. So until then, practice these techniques on value. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Like this video, comment. I love to get your comments. Also, if you'd like to become a patron to get the full content of all of my videos, you can do so at this clickable link at the end of the video. And get yourself a Monet Cafe Artist Series bracelet in the link in the description of this video. All right, artist, happy and blessed painting.